What's up guys? Welcome to your 19th computer networking tutorial and today we are going to discuss about wireless LAN, wireless local area networks. So guys, we, are, we will be going to discuss about two local area networks. Uh, on the first place, we will be discussing about ad hoc networks. How can we establish ad hoc networks? And uh, at the second place, we will be discussing about an IEEE uh, uh, 802.11x standard based networks. And here, X stands for A, B, G, and N. We are going to discuss about different flavors of 802.11 a, B, G, and N networks. And uh, in the end, we will be discussing about the security standards of IEEE 802.11 networks. So let's start our discussion of ad hoc networks. So ad hoc wireless LANs are those uh, LANs which do not require any router or access point. You just need two laptops with wireless cards and you can establish your ad hoc networks through Windows networking. So you just need to select ad hoc net networks and establish the connection between two or more uh, devices and you are ready to go. Uh, an example of ad hoc network is uh, that if you are in a meeting and if you would like to exchange the data between two or more computers, then you can easily establish an ad hoc networks on ad hoc uh, basis and then disassemble that network. So that is uh, all for the ad hoc networks. And now we will continue our discussion of IEEE 802.11x based local area networks. Uh, so uh, if I ask you what is a wireless network, wireless based network, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is that the wireless network has got some kind of a central device, for example, our wireless router and all, all the other computers are connected that device or wireless router. So this wireless router in networking term may be called as access point. Access point or wireless network is the center point of wireless based networks. <coughs> So it is wireless router and uh, we have got nodes or we may call them as stations. So your laptop, your desktop, your mobile phone, your tablet PC, your smart TV may be a part of a wireless network. And these wireless networks communicate wirelessly in air and they use different channels to communicate and the band or the frequency which is commonly used for wireless communication in home based and small office based networks is around 2.4 gigahertz and all how can we identify these uh, routers or access points for that we need SSID. SSID stands for Set Service Set Identifier. It is actually the name of your wireless network. It is 32 characters unique name. SSID differentiates one LAN from another. One WLAN or wireless LAN from another and uh, all the uh, stations uh, they try to access that uh, router or more than one router with the same SSID that 
that is cell service set identifier so guys i have already told you that there are different standards of a22.11 network that is there are different flavors of a22.11 network and the first uh, flavor which was introduced uh, was a22.11 a and usually the networks which were based on a22.11 a a, a standard operated on 5 gigahertz frequency so i have told you that nowadays these networks are operating on 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, frequency but uh, 802.11a uh, used to operate on 5 gigahertz frequency and it could support the data transfer rate of 54 megabits per second but as it was not compatible uh, with other networks operating at 2.4 gigahertz or uh, near uh, to 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency therefore it is not being used presently and then uh, based on the problems with 802.11 network uh, IEEE introduced a new standard that was based on that was called 802.11b uh, standard and it uh, operates on 2.4 gigahertz frequency and this 2.4 gigahertz frequency is called ISM ISM stands for industrial scientific medical band so uh, we as a small office or uh, in our network in our homes we can use these frequencies of ism or industrial scientific medical band frequencies uh, all right so uh, friends and uh, uh, this uh, standard used to support and is still supporting in some scenarios one megabits per second transfer data rate to 5.5 and yeah of course 54 megabits per second transfer rate and uh, one more thing that uh, these wireless networks uh, that are using 802.11x standards they use uh, channels different channels to operate and uh, some of the most common channels are channel number one when you open your uh, interface of your router then you can select either channel number one channel number six and channel number 11 these are the channels which are most widely used and these uh, are usually non congested channels and uh, you know, friends uh, uh, channel number one operates at 2.4 one two gigahertz per uh, gigahertz frequency channel number six uh, operates at 2.437 gigahertz frequency whereas channel number 11 uh, operates at 2.462 gigahertz uh, frequency and uh, then uh, as uh, uh, we needed uh, a more uh, reliable standard therefore IEEE introduced 802.11.11g uh, standard and it got very popular it also operated at uh, sorry 2.4 gigahertz frequency and it could support 54 uh, megabits per second but as we needed more and more uh, uh, bandwidth intensive uh, applications therefore IEEE introduced 802.11n standard in 2009 and this standard uh, uh, routers working based on these standards can support from 54 to 600 megabits per second uh, data transfer rate and uh, the trick is that these 
uh, routers uses MIMO uh, based uh, uh, standard that is multiple input multiple output that is these routers use different antennas at the same time to transfer data multiple input and multiple output and nowadays we are using either 802.11 and standard 802.11 g standard and uh, if we have got uh, a network which has got multiple access points that is uh, that it has either got multiple routers or multiple repeaters and a router then these types of networks are called infrastructure based wireless local area networks infrastructure local area networks infrastructure wireless local area network and uh, uh, how do these uh, wireless uh, local area networks work uh, these work based on CSMA CA standard that uh, is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection carrier sense that it sense uh, that uh, uh, if uh, it can send the data and uh, it tries to avoid collision collision avoidance so now let's discuss in detail how these uh, networks operate let us suppose we have got two laptops in our network and this is a sender and the sender would like to send the data to the receiver so how will it operate the sender will send a request that is request to send and if the receiver can receive the data then it will send a signal CTS that is clear to send so it tells the sender that it can send the data and the sender then sends the data and once the data is received the receiver sends the acknowledgement that data has been received so this is how wireless based networks operate and now a little bit about WLAN security there are three standards if you open your uh, uh, router interface then you can see that you have got WEP, WPA and WPA version 2 WEP stands for wide equivalent frequency but uh, it, pro uh, it proved to be a uh, uh, very weak standard and nowadays we do not usually use WPE standard standard for security then we have uh, in 203 IEEE introduced uh, WPA Wi-Fi protected access and uh, it was a good standard and they just uh, uh, modified it and in June 2004 they introduced the standard WPA2 and these standards uh, usually use 64 or 128 uh, bits uh, encryption for security reasons so thank you very much guys and girls for joining me for this tutorial if you would like to know more about uh, wireless networking then please visit ifetner.com and in the next tutorials we will be discussing uh, about how can we configure home-based computer networks so guys and girls thank you very much please like this video subscribe and visit ifectioner.com